Hi, I'm Mr. Mullaney. This is our recap of our lesson on Spanish explorers and colonies. Today, just for a change, I am working on my Windows PC. Figure students have to take chances and adjust to change, so I figured I would do this on a PC instead of a Chromebook so that I could say I am open to change and doing things a little differently. So this is our lesson on Spanish explorers and colonies. Going a little too fast. There, Pedro Aviles, he starts in 1565. He starts St. Augustine, the Spanish colony. St. Augustine exists to this day. A colony is an area settled by immigrants who continue to be ruled by the parent colony. Spain is the first Europeans in exploration and colonization of the Americas. You have Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon, de Leon was a Hidalgo, which is a Spanish upper class gentleman. He went to Florida in 1513 seeking the Fountain of Youth. There were tales, legends of the Fountain of Youth. This is a nice little drawing here I found on the internet of where Ponce de Leon explored. Florida, Cuba, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico area. You have Balboa. Balboa arrives at the Isthmus of Panama, this small strip of land with water on two sides that joins two large land masses, North America here, South America there. He and his crew are the first Europeans to see the Pacific Ocean from North America. They could see it while in Panama. There was no Panama Canal then. That was built by Teddy Roosevelt and the Americans in the 19, early 1900s. And so they go over land in Panama and see the Pacific Ocean. Ferdinand Magellan was actually, he was actually a Portuguese uh, explorer, but he sailed for Spain. His crew goes around the earth. He dies on a, a, during a fight along the way, but the few rema remaining members of his crew who went through war, starvation, all this terrible stuff, they uh, circ circumnavigate, go around the earth. They're the first explorers to do that. The Spanish system of conquest was established by the Reconquista, a 700-year conflict to reclaim the Iberian Peninsula from, the, from Muslims. Um, and they believed in blending cultures, converting non-believers, and extracting rich, riches from those who were conquered. This is all from their experience in the Reconquista. The Reconquista is simply taking this land, the Iberian Peninsula, and defeating the Moors, the Muslims, who had controlled it. We talk about Hernan Cortez. Cortez is able to destroy the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. Um, he's able to do this with help from Native Americans in the area. We watched a video in class, and what you want to think about when you review this on Google Classroom is why did the Native Americans who helped Cortez have conflict with the Aztecs, and what advantages helped Spain conquer the Aztecs. Then there's Pizarro. He goes to uh, Peru, modern-day Peru, this green country here, he conquers the Incas. He, too, has help from other Native American tribes, and smallpox and measles help to wipe out the Incas as well. By 1550, this is what the Spanish Empire looked like, everything in this tan color. So there's Spain, and there is your holdings in modern-day Mexico and a lot of modern-day Southern America, uh, so, excuse me, South America, with some holdings in the Caribbean, such as Cuba and Hispaniola as well. The encomienda system, uh, this is the system that's set up for Spanish colonization, where Native Americans are required to farm and ranch for the benefit of individual Spaniards. You start to get mestizos, people of mixed descent, during this time. Some more de Vaca and Estevanquio. They explore near Texas. You have Coronado, does the southwestern U.S. DeSoto lands near modern-day Tampa, Florida. Presidios star. Presidios, that's a better way to pronounce it. They are Spanish for forts. You have missions where Franciscans try to convert Native Americans. Remember gold, God, and glory. God, a big part of the motivation for this. And congr congregaciones, Spanish uh, settled vi villages that are there to help convert natives to Christianity. And you finally have some resistance. There, was, there were pockets of resistance, but not very organized. The most organized was the Pueblo Revolt of 1680. The Pueblo unify under Pope, and they are able to drive 
the Spanish out of Santa Fe, present day Santa Fe, New Mexico. Pope, and it's spelled a couple ways. Sometimes it's spelled like Pope with a little tilde over the E. Sometimes it's spelled P O apostrophe P A Y. You can see it, you'll see it spelled two different ways in different sources. He has a statue in Statuary Hall in the U.S. Capitol. Uh, so very, very prominent figure. New Mexico decided to send Pope's statue to Statuary Hall. So that's it. I'm Mr. Mullaney, and that is our recap. Using Snagit and a Windows computer of our lesson on Spanish explorers and colonies.